I'm Froggy, and here is a My Froggy Stuff mashup. This week is all about superheroes. We have gone comic book crazy. From a DIY made to move Wonder Woman to a custom Tony Stark, we've got you covered. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I am going to make a doll room inspired by Wonder Woman using poster board, scrapbook paper, tape, fabric, a recycled cereal box, and glue. I start by building the room using two pieces of poster board. I take each one and fold it in half, then fold it in half again, unfold it, cut down the center fold, stopping at the center of the poster board so the bottom sides can be overlapped to make a folding doll room. Repeat to make two. When the two folding corner rooms are side by side, it makes a larger room. To connect the two walls, lay the poster board down, stack them good side to good side, lining up the edges, take a long piece of tape, place it halfway over the edge, and wrap it around to the other side. I only place the tape on the side for the wall and not the floor. This way, the room will be able to fold up for easy storage later. Set the room back up to see a large open space. Looking at this Wonder Woman's uniform, we see red, blue, silver, and gold. So we are going to try to pull some of these colors into the room. I'm going to start with the red. Let's use a red brick on the wall and this red and white wood grain for the floor. Ooh, and some windows would be nice as well. Before I glue down my paper, I take a ruler and a pencil and sketch out a design for the window. So I made three lines for two sets of window panes and I made a curve going across at the top. Use the ruler to draw lines to make panes and a trim between them. I have folded my poster board so here is the center of the room, the side we taped. I am going to use an X-Acto knife to cut through both layers of poster board at the same time. And remember to always have adult supervision when working with sharp objects. If you do not wish to use an X-Acto knife, you can always use scissors. But I like to use an X-Acto knife because it gives a nice clean line and because I can cut two windows at the same time. Carefully remove the poster board to get two windows the same size. I take some gold foil scrapbook paper, place it behind the window, cut out the panes, remove the cutouts, trim around the edges to make gold trim for the window. Before I glue this down, I cover the walls with scrapbook paper. Then I glue down the frame, cover the floor with scrapbook paper to make our red room with a touch of gold. Now we are going to make a bed using a recycled cereal box and cardboard. Start by cutting off one side of the box to make a tray. Trace the sides onto a piece of cardboard, cut on the lines drawn, and glue them inside the box to add strength. Cover with paper, take the cutout and cover it, glue it inside, cut and cover another piece of cardboard, glue it into the box, print printables from our dog gamer room, cut them out and glue them onto cardstock. Cut around the outer edge, fold on the lines between the screens, glue it into the box, Glue the keyboard onto the cardstock, cut it out leaving a large tab at the bottom, fold it going back so the keyboard will be on an incline. Place it inside the box underneath the monitors and I'm gluing everything in place to help keep it a little neater. I made a stool from our doll science lab table video. I'm gluing a piece of silver paper on top to bring in the color from her silver bracelets, to make a hidden office for her to contact the Justice League, or to do her homework if we're talking about DC superhero girls. And I found these green beads. 
I cut them with floral wire cutters and then glued them to a rock to make kryptonite for a paperweight. And just in case Supergirl or Superman are under alien mind control again. Ugh. You'd be surprised how often that happens. Since her secret office is supposed to be a secret, when she is not contacting the Justice League, we can fold it down and use some fabric. I cut two large rectangles of blue, then one sheet of felt that are a half an inch wider than the box going all the way around. I've stacked the fabric good side to good side and then have the felt on top. So a straight line all the way around the edges, leaving an opening. Then I flip it between the two pieces of blue fabric. So the felt is on the inside. So the opening closed to make a mattress. I cut two more larger rectangles of fabric and add a layer of fleece. So around the edge, turn it inside out. So the opening closed to make a plush comforter. Add pillows to make the bed. Now I am going to use some leftover fabric, cut four panels, hem the edges, pleat them, and glue them next to the windows for curtains. Use a picture from the doll packaging. This is from Diana Prince and Hidden Sword. Cut out a rectangle. Use paper to add a map, then gold paper for a frame. To make artwork, I'm using repositionable glue so I can move it to another wall if I like. Glue trim above the windows for a valance that adds a touch of gold. Cut a red knit material, lay it across the bottom of the bed. For a throw, cut leftover cardboard into strips. Cover them with scrapbook paper to look like wood. I have six thin planks, one wide plank, and two short ones. Take two thin planks and glue them onto the wide one. Glue the short ones in front. Glue a thin plank to the front and to the back. Glue another one at the top and one going across the back. Add some buttons to make a weapons rack. Wait, what? A weapons rack? Well, she's Wonder Woman. She has a whole bunch of swords and stuff. We had to put them somewhere. And don't forget my shiny bracelets. Completing our Wonder Woman inspired room. And when playtime is over, carefully place the accessories inside the box and fold down the room until next time. And you're done. Happy crafting! This is me, I'm so royal. And you all wanna be round. Yeah, yeah you all wanna be round. Round a champion, a champion. This is me, I still on it. Cause you all wanna be loved. Yeah, you all wanna be loved. But a champion, a champion. Yeah, all I wanna do is just say, You don't understand how I play. I am on my way to win you over. No way, yeah. I am going to make a costume for a doll using fabric, a needle and thread, or a sewing machine, thin cardboard from a cereal box, elastic cord, a stretchy fabric like dancewear foil, craft paint, Mod Podge, and glue. This is a fabric called dancewear foil, and I like using this because it can stretch both ways and you don't have to hem the edge. You can leave a raw edge, just cut it neatly and it won't fray. So I start by folding the fabric over and cutting a wide rectangle that comes to the doll's shoulder. Flip it so the good side is on the inside. Place the doll on the inside at the center point, pinching the material in the middle of her back. Then use a pencil to follow the line of her back. And this works better when the doll is not quite so heavily clothed. 
Extend the line from the bottom of the back all the way to the corner. Sew on the line drawn. Try it on the doll for size. Trim off the excess fabric. Pinch the fabric around the doll's legs. Then draw a line on the inside. Lay it flat and sew on the line drawn. Trim off the excess. Flip it right side out. Place it on the doll, then use a needle and thread to gather the top. To make the basic outfit. To decorate my costume, I can take small strips of the fabric, fold it over, and stitch it across, making a small loop to use as a belt. Make a loop out of a wider piece to add layers to the top. Pinch it for a different look. Take a rectangle of fabric and wrap it around the doll's leg. Use a pencil to trace the leg and around the foot. Sew on the line drawn, then trim off the excess. Then flip them right side out to make boots. Or sew the feet onto the bottom of the outfit to close them in. Make the top a little longer. Cut small holes at the shoulders to make a sleeveless top. Lowering the back can also make it easier when dressing the doll. Just be sure to reinforce the bottom stitch. Cut a circle out of the material, fold it in half, then stitch the center to the back. To make a cape, use a tube to make sleeves. Use trim and cord for added details. On a piece of cardboard from a cereal box, I sketch out a belt design, a circle for a shield, a tiara, and whatever else I would like for my superhero to have, like cuffs, shin guards, wrist guards, or shoulder pads. Cut them out. Begin to curl them to fit the doll. Cut pieces of cardboard from a cereal box into strips. Use a strip to make a loop around another to make a belt. Glue them in a circle to make a tiara. Or cut a circle, cut a line to the center, cross the edges, and glue them in place. Glue strips to the back. Glue on layers of cardboard for decoration. Paint them with craft paint. Then dry brush it with a metallic paint to give it some texture. Seal it with a layer of Mod Podge. Glue on elastic cord to attach items like mask and shoulder pads. And you're done. Happy crafting! I'm going to customize a few of our male dolls by giving them facial hair like mustaches using craft paint and fine tip paint brushes. A toothpick can sometimes be a good substitute. I start by taking a doll with a clean face. I apply craft paint using very small brush strokes and I just like to take my time and do one at a time trying to make sure I know exactly where I want each little hair to go. However, if I do make a mistake, the craft paint can be washed off his face. Adding a touch of water will thin the paint to make the hair look a little bit more like stubble. Or paint it thick for a popular look. And when I'm painting the mustache, I like to do a thin outline first, just so I know about where I want it to go. That way, if I make any mistakes, I can quickly fix them before filling in the rest of the mustache. With Ken's new sculpted hair, I can paint it to change his hair color, lightly brush it with another color for highlights, add a little color to the eyebrows to make them match. We can alter the eye color, turning his eyes from blue to green, giving Ken a completely different look. Speaking of different looks, we took Ken in his black suit, painted his hair dark brown, matched his eyebrows and gave him brown eyes, added a mustache, we add more facial hair under the lip and to the chin in an hourglass shape, continuing around the jawline, then go up at an angle. We remove the pink bow, fold it over the collar, fold over a piece of ribbon, wrap one end with thread, trim the ends, attach it to the front for a necktie. Add a pair of sunglasses to make your very own Tony Stark. 
and you're done. Happy crafting! Now that we have two DC Superhero Girl Wonder Woman dolls, it's time to try a little experiment. We have had many requests to make a made-to-move DC Superhero Girl. Personally, I like the way they are because they have this really nice athletic look. And we would be giving up the muscles. On the other hand, if this is successful, then she will have the ultimate posable Barbie doll body which in my book makes it worth the risk. Going into this, I am a little doubtful because her neck is a little larger than the Barbies, so we may end up with a case of bobblehead syndrome. <gasps> oh no, but we're gonna try it anyway. The good news is she doesn't have bobblehead syndrome. However, the neck is a little shorter than usual, so it's taking me a moment to get used to it. But look at what she can do! Let's change her hair. I straightened her hair by running it under hot water. Then I combed it and allowed it to dry. And remember to always be careful when working with hot water. Now, what to wear? Since she is usually rocking the whole red, white, and blue thing, uh, let's try something else. These are some bluish gray joggers that we made in a previous video. The blue is barely there, but I'm liking it better. I don't have a lot of options for a red shirt, so I'm gonna choose a white one. At least this one has a touch of red on it. We can add this sleeveless Barbie hoodie for a little more red, or since she is super athletic, we can give her a gym bag that we made in a previous video to look like she is heading to the gym. And you're done. Happy crafting! I am going to make a decorative mask for a doll using cardstock, thin cardboard from an old box, an X-Acto knife, elastic cord or ribbon, a measuring tape and a pencil, and whatever trimmings you like, like feathers, self-stick gems and jewels, or ribbons and pom-poms. I start by measuring my doll's face from temple to temple. On a piece of cardboard I cut from an old box, I mark my measurements and I make another mark in the center for where the nose should be. I begin to sketch out the shape of my mask. I cut it out. I fit it to my doll and then mark where her eyes should be. On an old cutting board, I use an X-Acto knife to cut out the eye shapes. I measure it up to my doll for any final adjustments. And now I have a basic pattern to make my mask. So I lay it on the back side of my cardstock, trace it, cut them out. On this black mask, I decided to color the edges with the marker, just so you didn't see this white outline. Erase the pencil marks from the back so it doesn't leave marks on your doll. Add feathers, add jewels. I bend the mask slightly. I glue elastic cord or ribbon to the back so my doll can wear it. And you're done. Happy crafting! Thank you for joining us for this week's My Froggy Stuff mashup. Let us know what mashups you would like to see in the comments down below. 
Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at My Froggy Stuff and The Frog Vlog. And we will see you next time. Bye!